A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty how silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Oh, Silver! There were two important events in the border town of El Paso when Trader James arrived. One was the funeral of old Peg Radcliffe, the most elaborate tribute the town had ever seen. The other important event, so far as Trader James was concerned, was the fact that he had managed to arrive in El Paso when the streets were crowded. And as he dismounted from his ancient creaking spring wagon, the venerable bargainer glanced at the crowds with supreme satisfaction. Looks like maybe we might get a job of trading done. Folks always needing a pile of things, and I got a pile of things to trade. Yes, sir, a pile of things. Indeed, Trader James did have a pile of things to trade. Inside the covered spring wagon was the most disorderly confusion of merchandise imaginable. There were odds and ends of harness, kitchen utensils, a small chest full of patent medicines, a dozen or more odd-sized horseshoes tied together with bailing wire. There were dishes and hardware, guns, rifles, a threadbare Prince Albert coat, and a hundred other odds and ends. And on the bottom of the pile in the wagon bed, long forgotten, was a wooden leg that Mr. James had once taken in trade for an old copy of Harper's Weekly. <laughs> well, it's right smart gathering in town, seems like. Wonder just what to... Hey, Bob! Yes, sir? What's all the commotion for? Ain't never seen so many people up and about in broad daylight. Least why it's not in El Paso. You must have just arrived in town. Well, not more than three minutes ago. What's up? The whole town turned out to pay their respects to Peg Radcliffe. Yeah? You mean uh, last respects or funeral? That's right. Mr. Radcliffe was murdered. Oh, bad business murder. Don't even like the sound of it. Uh, this Radcliffe fellow must have been some kind of a high mucky muck, huh? No. As I understand it, he was a very poor man, but awfully well liked. Well, good for him. It's too bad the fellow that murdered him didn't like him. 
you say his name was Peg? They called him that because he wore a wooden leg. Oh. You should have been here in time to see the funeral procession. There must have been hundreds of dollars worth of flowers. Flowers, eh? Everybody chipped in, I suppose. Most of them were paid for by Mr. Hawley. You mean Julius Hawley? Uh-huh. Do you know him? I don't know who he is. Always heard he was tight in a boot, though. I guess he was the best friend Peg Radcliffe ever had. I can't imagine Julius Hawley being a friend of nobody, from what I've heard of him. Uh, the man that was killed, Mr. Radcliffe, he was an old campaigner in the Mexican Wars. Huh? So was I, Bob. They tell the story around town of how Radcliffe was a captain of cavalry under General Zachary Taylor. Huh. I was with Zach Taylor and Buena Vista. Were you? Yeah. Golly! That's when he defeated Santa Ana. Yeah, you, you've been reading your history books, I see. Uh, what's your name, Bob? Dan Reed. And yours? Trader James. I got a pair of mules and a wagon load of stuff to trade. Well, I reckon I better mosey around and get some of the trade and start it, too, before this crowd breaks up. Golly, I, <laughs> I wonder if... Uh, uh, wonder if what? Well... Would you mind very much if I sort of stayed around and watched you? I mean, Shucks, I'd no, like... Daniel, you hang around all you might do. In fact, you might learn something. That's what I thought. I always said that a man's education ain't complete if he ain't learned how to make a trade. Of course, you ain't a man by no means, but just the same, it ain't gonna hurt Jenny to learn how to take care of yourself when it comes to trade. <laughs> Come on, boy, we'll drive the wagon down to Union Square and see what we can get started. Fine. <clears throat> get in! Get it! It was late afternoon when Dan Reed returned to the Lone Ranger's camp. After helping the masked man and Tonto with the evening meal, the boy related his experiences in the city that day. And I told him I had a couple friends I wanted to bring over to meet him. Gee, he's such an interesting old timer. Where old trader make camp, Dan? Just a couple miles from here, close to the river. We can ride over and visit him this evening if you'd like to. That'd Dan. be swell. I've heard about Trader James, the well-known character all along the frontier. A mighty shrewd bargainer when it comes to making a trade. Shrewd? Golly, you should see that man operate. <laughs> there was a cowboy there at the square visiting from the New Mexico Territory. And he had his heart set on a Spanish bridle the trader had. Uh, did Cowboy Funner get bridled, Dan? Sure. He tried to buy it, but the trader said he didn't, ha didn't have anything to sell. And asked the cowboy what he had to trade for the bridle. Oh, what happened? The cowpuncher offered Mr. James $20 in gold for it. But the old man insisted on making a trade. So? So, finally, the cowboy traded. He just bought a brand new Stetson for $35, and he traded that for the bridle. <laughs> and within 10 minutes, Mr. James had traded the Stetson to another man for a gold watch. Mm -hmm. And then he traded the watch to a Mexican for a beautiful tapestry. <laughs> James fella not lose time, huh? And did he still have the tapestry when you left him? Golly, no. He traded it to a woman, a Mrs. Hawley, for a whole attic full of junk. <laughs> you certainly had a large day of education with Trader James, Dan. Wait till I tell you about it. Right after he got that tapestry from the Mexican, Mrs. Hawley came along. And the minute she saw the thing she tried to buy it from... Excuse me, but may I look at that tapestry? Yes, indeed, ma'am. You surely may. Look it over to your heart's content. Now, I don't rightly know the fancy words for describing that thing, but it sure is pretty, ain't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's the most exquisite pattern I've ever seen. Hmm, I see you've got an eye for quality, ma'am. Will you sell it to me? Lady, I could sell off the whole kit and caboodle of what I got here if I was a mind to. But Trader James don't sell. He just trades. If you've got anything you'd like to trade for this tapestry... But why can't I just buy it? I, I'll pay you a good price. Why, if I was to start selling off my wares, ma'am, first thing I knowed, I'd be stranded someplace with a pocket full of gold. No wagon, no team, no merchandise, no nothing but gold. Of course, once in a while, I make a trade and take in a little cash to boot, but... Uh... Listen, come to my home this afternoon. I'll find something to trade you for that tapestry. Well, now, I reckon I might do that. My name is Hawley, Mrs. Julius Hawley. Ho, oh, ho. Well, now, I'll sure make it my business to be there, man. And whatever you do, don't let anyone else trade you out of that lovely tapestry. That's a promise, ma'am. Dan, how would you like to go along with me over to Miss Hawley's place, hmm? What did you think of the Hawley place, Dan? Golly, it's, 
It's almost like a mansion. They had servants all over the place. And uh, did you meet Julius Hawley? He wasn't at home when we got there. But Mrs. Hawley, she turned out to be a pretty smart trader herself. She said she had lots of odds and ends up in the attic. So Trader James and I went up to look around. Uh, what happened? Well, personally, I think she was even more pleased to get rid of the stuff in that attic than she was to get the tapestry. What happened was, after looking over that awful pile of junk in the attic, Mr. James traded her the tapestry for everything up there. Oh, that sounds like Trader Feller. Get worse to bargain, eh, Kimasabi? Well, depends on what the junk consisted of, Toto. There may have been something he especially wanted. I don't know what it could have been. Old lace curtains and a silk parasol and a trunk full of old clothes. A couple pairs of boots. <laughs> I helped him carry the stuff out of the attic. And you know what we found in that old trunk? <laughs> I can't imagine. A wooden leg. Huh? Honest, a brand new wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Trader James will probably have a hard time peddling. Mrs. Hawley told us how her husband had been a good friend of the man that was killed in El Paso. Uh, Peg Radcliffe. Radcliffe used to hobble around on a crutch. And about a year ago, Mr. Hawley bought him a wooden leg. You know, I, I've often wondered about the friendship between Radcliffe and Julius Hawley. So did everyone else in El Paso, I guess. Because after they got to be friends, Mr. Hawley had an artificial leg fitted for Radcliffe. And then he had an extra one made, just in case Peg would ever need it. Was uh, that the one you found in the trunk? Uh-huh. According to Mrs. Hawley, her husband just bought it and kept it at his house in case of emergency, I guess. No, there's something strange about the murder of Peg Radcliffe. From what Tonto and I have been able to learn, well, the man was well liked by everyone. Mm, that's right, Kimosabi. Him not have enemies. Well, golly, he must have had at least one enemy. Then, when a man is well liked, especially a poor man like Radcliffe, it's hard to establish a motive for murder. But we do know that he was murdered, and if we can, we're going to find out why. <laughs> That evening, at the home of Julius Hawley. Julius, darling, there's something I want to show you. Yes? What is it, Elsie? Just wait until you see the wonderful bargain I made today. Oh, been shopping, huh? Shopping, yes. But never did I manage a bargain like this before. What? Well, say, it's mighty pretty, Elsie. Where'd you get it? Oh, from an itinerant peddler. Or rather, I suppose I should say a trader. Mm. How much? Believe it or not, it didn't cost me a penny. And I'm certain this lovely tapestry must be worth at least $100 or more. Well, I don't understand. You say it cost you nothing? Not a penny. And besides, I got that horrid mess cleaned out of the attic, also for nothing. You... What did you say? A funny old character. His name was Trader James. He wouldn't sell me the tapestry, but insisted on trading it for something. But what about the attic? What did you trade him for that thing? What? Julius, what in the world is... Answer me. What did you trade for it? Well, I got rid of a horrible pile of junk that was cluttering up the attic. Some old curtains, a couple of pairs of your old boots, a trunk full of old clothing. Really, darling, it was a shame to push all that stuff off on the old you, man, but... You say his name is Trader James? Why, yes. And he got but... the trunk with everything in it? Why, of course, but they were just rags. There was nothing in there that you'd ever wear again. What... Julius, what on earth has come over you? Where are you going? I'm going to get that trunk back. Oh, wait. Please tell me what... What? Well, hello, Mr. Harley. What brings you here at this hour? Shut up and night? listen to me. You ever hear of a peddler named Trader James? James? Oh, sure, sure. He was in town today. I know that. Listen, more. You've got to find that man. You've got to, you hear? Sure, I can find him without too much trouble. Why? My wife gave him a trunk out of the attic today. Yeah? So you want the trunk back, is that it? There was a package in that trunk, Moore. A package you know all about. It's worth $60,000 to us. What? You mean to say... I mean to say you better get busy and find this traitor, James. And get that package back. One way or another. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now 
Now to continue our story. The masked rider of justice and his two companions following the winding trail along the banks of the Rio Grande and suddenly pulled their horses to a walk as the boy, Dan, pointed to a faint yellow light far ahead in the darkness. That's Trader James Camp. Easy, Victor. Easy, boy. Steady, big fella. Steady. Maybe you'd better ride ahead and let him know he has company, Dan. Uh -huh. All right. Come on, Victor! Meanwhile, in the camp ahead, Trader James was already having company, and mighty disagreeable company in the person of Al Moore, who was attempting to carry out the orders of his boss, Julius Hawley. Now, you listen to me, old-timer. I don't want to palaver all night. And me neither. And since you got nothing to trade me for that I truck, said I'd give you $50 for it. I don't want $50. Strictly against my principles to sell anything. And I don't savvy why you're so all fired anxious to own that trunk full of junk. But you go find something to trade for it, and I'll talk with you. Otherwise, you can... All right, you, you old goat. What's the matter? You gone loco? What are you dragging a gun on me for? Oh, you want to trade, huh? Well, I got nothing to trade, see? Nothing except a forty-five slug. Why, you doggone ignoramus, I'll... Hold it. I... Now, what do you want? Fifty in cash or forty-five in lead? Make up your mind. Oh, that shooting iron don't scare me. You can go to blazes. All right, if that's the way you want it. Oh, no, you don't. Let go my arm, you crazy old coot. Hey, what the... Somebody coming this way. Think you can come into a man's cab and... No! no. I gotta hurry now. Find that trunk in the wagon. Crazy old fool putting up a fight like that when he don't even know what he's fighting for. It's gotta be someplace right here in the trunk. Gotta be here someplace. That's it. Like where Harley said it would be. Now to get out of here. Steady. There, steady. Get up. Come on, get up, boy. Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, boy. Oh, steady. Oh, Silver. Oh, here's Victor. Someone ran away just as I got here. Oh, we heard a shot. Where's the old trader, Dan? Here he is, lying on the ground. Otto, quickly. Try to follow the man who just left here. I'll see what I can do for Trader James. Uh. He was heading toward town, Toto. Maybe you can catch him. I'll follow you in a moment, Toto. Uh. Get up, scout. Look around for a pail of water, Dan. I'll see how badly the old man's hurt. Right. Easy. Here, old timer. Let's find out what happened to you. <laughs> Confounded pilfering varmint. What happened? We heard a shot. A gone robber tried to steal trunk. Take it easy, easy now. Here's some water. Oh, good, thanks. Here, try to drink this. Sure. Good thing I grabbed his gun arm. Reckon he missed me. What the... A masked man. Another crook. Not this time, trader. Uh, try to describe the man who was here. We'd like to help you. Dan. Dan Reed. What you doing... Traveling with this masked man. This man is one of the friends I said I'd bring over this evening, Mr. James. Huh. Doggone if I... Give me that lantern, boy. I've got to see if he got the trunk. At least find out what he took from it. I hardly think anyone could have taken your trunk away on horseback, trader. Well, maybe he couldn't, but... <clears throat> they were sure something in that trunk that he wanted powerful bad. <clears throat> well, the trunk's here, all right. And everything's thrown every which way around the wagon. Don't seem to be... Well, I'm a son of a gun. Is there something missing? Of all the low-code stunts to hold a man up for a thing like that. Well, what is it? The pig leg. There was a pig leg in that trunk, and now it's gone. Of all the worthless things to... I remember seeing it when we carried the trunk out of Mrs. Hawley's home. Evidently, it was worth something to the man who came here. Well, I'd have given it to him if he had said so. I'd give him two of them, as a matter of fact. Got another one somewhere in the bottom of my wagon. Been carrying it for years. Now, quickly, get it for me, will you? What? You two? <laughs> what in tunk is you want with a peg leg? Maybe I can make a trade with a man who was hey, here. Now, don't you try and make any trade with me. <clears throat> I'll get it for you, but don't offer me nothing for it, because all I got for the last one I had was a splitting headache. <clears throat> well, here it is, and if that's all you want, take it and welcome. Uh, thanks. Dan, you stay here with the trader. Easy, big fella. I'm going to town after Tuttle. I'll be here when you get back. Good. Come on, Silver. I've seen men fight over a lot of things in my time, but doggone if I've ever seen so much bother about something as worthless as a wooden leg. Near the outskirts of the city, the masked rider of justice found his Indian friend waiting for him. Oh, Silver, easy, big fellow. Steady. 
How are you, Kimosabe? What did you learn, Toto? Uh, Toto, right. Plenty fast. But trying to see where him go. Good. Now, you lead the way. Whatever this mystery is all about, we'll try to get to the bottom of it. It's not very far. I'll go to shack close by river and meet two other men there. Now, listen, Toto. I have a plan to get back the peg leg that was stolen from the old trader. And, Toto? Uh-huh. I think when we get to the bottom of this thing, we're going to know why Radcliffe was murdered and who murdered him. That's plenty good. Let's go, Toto. Get him up, Scout. Hold, Silver. In the weather-beaten shack where Julius Hawley had called on Al Moore earlier that evening, three men were talking in low tones. The boss ain't never fooled with this stuff before. And now that old Radcliffe's dead... Somebody he turns, he... I have to tell you to shut up about that. I was only going to say that the boss ain't likely to try fooling with something like this again. It's too risky. Yeah, too risky for us, you mean. The boss don't take any risk. Just what are you gents leading up to? You ain't got any idea, huh, Al? Never mind beating around the bush. Talk plain. All right. I will. Me and Joe decided to take the stuff and clear out. We want you to go along with us, Al. Someplace up north. Oh, double-cross the boss, huh? A couple of nice gents you are. We ain't trying to double-cross you, are we? That stuff's worth a lot of money, Al. We could split it three ways. Hey, what, what? There are two six-guns here. Two more at the window covering you. Don't make a move. Hey, what's the mess for? Who are you? What do you want here, mister? I want that stuff you were planning to split three ways. I don't move. I got it myself. Hey, what the... Now, listen, mister, that thing ain't worth nothing to you. It's just an ordinary peg leg. Sure, that's all it is. And I'll trade you one that's more ordinary. There you are. Hey, wait a minute. Well, you don't know what that thing's worth. What well, that is... Uh... Well, what makes you think I don't? Well, look, maybe we could fix it to cut you in on something pretty good, see? Meaning you'd like to split four ways instead of three? Sure, sure, we could split four ways. Why should I split four ways? Maybe I'd rather split two ways. Two? What? What you mean, mister? Figure it out for yourself. You didn't think the boss is asleep. Well, you three were planning to double-cross him, what? did you? You mean... Now, wait a minute. You trying to tell us the boss sent you here? I'm not telling you anything. But you ought to be smart enough to figure out a few answers for yourself. But if you were the boss and knew what he knows, what would you do? You know, what do you mean? Know what he knows. Adios, amigo. Wait, wait, just a minute. Yes? If you can tell Harley for us, we'll be around to see him. Tell him that, mister. Ah, never mind, Hawley. Here's the man that's got the stuff we want. Get him. Now, you yellow buzzards. Why don't you help me nail that critter? Come on, Hawley, let's go. Ah, sure, ah. and get a gun hand smash for our trouble the same as you. I'm saving my shooting for Julius Hawley. And so am I. Only I ain't saving it no longer to taste to get from here to where he lives. Get him up, scout. i Jim Fletcher, sheriff of El Paso County, awakened at the sound of insistent pounding at the door. What? Apparently, the man arose and lighted a lamp. All right, hold your horses. Confound it all. Don't know why a man ain't got better sense to be on a job like this. Well, what in thunder? What you got there, Injun? You take a chair. Put it away. Then come quick with the tonto. Say, what kind of joke is this? Wake a man up in the middle of the night to hand him a wooden leg. Peg leg, plenty hollow inside, Sheriff, and plenty full of opium. What? Not time to explain now. You come with Tonto. Hurry. Come with you? Where? To catch fellas who smuggle opium cross border. Same fellas who kill Radcliffe. Radcliffe? I'll be with you in a jiffy, Tonto. You run around back to the stable and get my horse saddled while I get into some clothes, will you? <laughs> Julius Hawley heard the sound of footsteps on the porch of his home and went forward eagerly to answer the door. Before he'd reached it, however, the door was thrown open and three grim-faced men walked into the room. More. I've been up all night waiting for you. You don't have to wait no longer, Hawley. Well, where's the... You didn't get it. Never mind putting on an act, Hawley. We're here to settle up with you. Settle? You'd better explain yourself, and quickly. You sent the masked man after the dope. You figured on double cross and this figure we'd be afraid to do anything about it. Ah, quit jabbering about it. Let's get the stuff and get out of here. Where is it, Holly? Ah, you miserable pup. Never mind that. Either you deal with us now, or we let the law know what happened to Peg Radcliffe. 
and why it happened to him. It's too bad Radcliffe found out what you was up to, Hawley. If you hadn't have killed him to shut his mouth, you could have gone oh, away Ah, let's with take it. care of this double-crosser and clear out. Well, Hawley, you're going to talk? Hey, what are you talking? I'm talking more. You're all under arrest, all of you. Look out! That's enough! We quit! I got my hands up. Don't shoot! Get their guns, Hollow. Yeah. You, Hawley. Reach high, you killer. Oh, it's a masked man. The same one told us Hardly had sent him. I told you nothing, except to figure things out for yourself. So happens that you figured wrong, Moore. You stupid, blundering fools. To let yourselves, all of us, be caught like rats in a trap. The sheriff has the opium, Hawley. And he knows now that you sent Radcliffe across the border the night before you killed him. And had these three buzzards over there waiting for him. They got him all liquored up and switched his peg leg for the one that was full of opium. Well, maybe you can prove that. But you can't hang no murder on us three. I got you for attempted murder when you attacked Trader Jones, fella. And that'll be enough to keep you out of circulation for quite a spell. Hawley, what'd you want to kill Radcliffe for? I... Uh... Well, I'll tell you, Sheriff. Old Radcliffe found out that we'd switched his peg leg. And then he found out why. He was bound and determined to hand us over to the law. Yeah, it's too bad old peg ain't here this minute. See how glad the law is now that you have been handed over. Come on, you varmints. Get started for the jailhouse. I'll fill my heart. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.